would like to talk about is how uncertainty in one variable affects the uncertainty in an output function. For example, I know my location in my backyard. As I move around my backyard, my location determines my altitude, right? Because the yard or the shape of the yard is a function of my location. It's a function of my location in two variables, north-south and east-west, right? So the question is, if I'm standing here with my GPS, it will tell me that my location is a certain number, plus or minus some error. In fact, if you actually get into the hardware of the GPS, it'll say that. Whether we're measuring with the GPS, my location, or if I'm measuring the diameter of a shaft with a micrometer, we know that all, un all measurements carry uncertainty with them. So if I use that diameter to calculate, for example, a shaft stress, the question is, what's my uncertainty in that shaft stress because of the uncertainty in my diameter measurement? Or, as we're seeing here, what's the error or uncertainty in my altitude calculation because of an error in my location information? So how do we do that? Well, let's think about it this way. Let's think about my left to right movement or my east to west movement as the X domain. So this is X and we're gonna call my altitude Z. So as I stand here, I say, well, here is my X position. I know it, say, plus or minus three feet, you know, plus or minus a yard. So if I move a yard to my left or a yard to my right, we see that my altitude changes pretty considerably. So how do we find that? Well, that's pretty simple. If I were to think mathematically about this, easily draw a diagram that would show that if this is my run, right, rise over run would be the slope of the ground that I'm standing on. So let's assume for a second that this is the ground, this green function here is the ground, and it's some function z as a function of x, okay, where z and x are these two respectively, just like we were talking about out in the yard. Uh, Z is going to be my altitude, X is going to be my location left to right. And let's assume this is the point where I'm standing to the best of my knowledge. Now if I knew X exactly, we would have no problem. We would have no uncertainty in Z if it was a function of X only, uh, because we knew X exactly. In reality, all measurements come with some uncertainty, right? And so we're going to call this uncertainty omega X, right? And so there's an uncertainty, omega z, due to omega x. We can see that very plainly. Because I don't know my location left to right, I have some standard error resulting in z. So an, an uncertainty here, where x is you know some nominal value, plus or minus some other value, z has to have an associated uncertainty as well. The question is, how do we solve for that? Well. The simplest way is to assume that if, if omega x is relatively small, then I could take the slope, which is the rise over the run, and then multiply it by omega x, and I would get the rise, right? Rise over run times the run is equal to the rise. Well, when we do that, we're actually taking uh, some differential element dz, by dx, right? This is the rise, this is the run, so dz by dx is a slope. We recognize this. This is the derivative, right? So we take the function derivative at that point and then multiply it by omega x. And that gives us omega z. Now, because this is a function of more than one variable, z is actually a function of x, y, uh, in this particular case, and in many other cases, it might be a function of many variables. We have to take the partial derivative because I'm holding all the other variables constant, but then changing this. And so we would find that it's actually the partial derivative of z with respect to x if we're using more than one variable. But that's it. It's just the slope times this uncertainty gives us the output uncertainty. Let's think about this for a minute. If my slope is very steep, but my uncertainty is pretty small, because of the steep slope, I might still have a really big uncertainty. Let's say the slope was three times as steep as what I'm standing on now. If I moved uh, one foot to the left and one foot to the right, I would get the same uncertainty as having this slope and three feet to the left and three feet to the right. 
So we can see that there are two things at play here. The slope is important and the uncertainty is important. There's important information contained in here because simply by looking at the derivatives of this function, we could find, okay, well, there are some variables that my uncertainty could be big and it wouldn't affect the output very much. And so I can use cheaper methods to measure those things. Then again, there might be some things where the uncertainty, that's the slope, the derivative is extremely high. And so I know that I need to use a precise measurement tool to measure those things. So whether you're talking about location as a function of x and y, or north and south and east and west, or again, shaft stress as a, as a function of diameter and load and moment and all that, uh, the same concepts apply. Now this is where it gets kind of interesting. So I have an uncertainty in z associated with my uncertainty in x, right? Now what about an uncertainty in y? So north-south, toward or away from the camera, what happens when I move, for example, toward the camera? Well, we find that my altitude really doesn't change much. At this particular point, it happens to be because of the place where I am on the hill. I'm I'm facing right along the contour line of the hill, which means the derivative is approaching zero. Again, because the derivative is zero, a large error in y doesn't cause very much error in z at all. So, this is a really neat concept. How do we add those two up? All we do is add them like sides of a triangle. So let's assume that we have uh, z as some function of in our case, x and y, where we have more than one variable. So what do we do with the derivatives? Before we said, well, it's dz by dx, but what if y is there? Well, we take a partial derivative, very simple. Uh, instead of dz by dx, we're going to use the Greek delta. And we're going to say del z by del x. And what this denotes is that this is a function of more than one variable, but we're taking it, uh, this derivative, with respect to x only. And we're holding the other things constant. And we would say del z by del x times the uncertainty in x is going to be the total uncertainty in z due to x, due to the uncertainty in x, right? And then we're going to have another del z by del y, because we have to do this for the other variable as well. There's another variable involved, and it's got its own associated uncertainty. Right, and so this is omega z due to omega y. Okay, the question is how do we combine these? Well, we add them like we add the sides of a triangle. And so we would say, okay, well, if this is omega z due to x, and this is omega z due to y, then this we'll call omega z, or the, the total omega z. Well, it's then it's this squared plus this squared square root, right? And so if I do that and square these, that's how we find it.